Gwen, the bog witch, sat on the rickety bench outside her lopsided shack. She loosened the tatters of her woollen shawl from around her wrinkled face and, narrowing her eyes, fixed a hard stare on the intruder. It was the boy. There again. He was standing under the sleeping trees on the far side of her swampy brown lake. He thinks I can't see him, odds, Gwen said. Her voice was croaky. She didn't use it much these days. She gave odds and ends the warty toad, her companion, a little stroke. Odds made no comment. It was probably a dare. His so-called friends will have taunted him to come and spy on the old witch in the bog. Be off with you, visitors not welcome. The boy turned and vanished into the shadows of the wood. Gwen sniffed the chilly air. The leaves had long since yellowed and fallen. A slimy layer of rotting lake sludge moved in and out with the slight waves. From the town, which lay beyond the council dump, a distant church bell echoed across the cold land. There'll be more visitors soon, hordes of them taking a stroll around my swamp in their Christmas jumpers and their Christmas smiles, walking off their Christmas piggery. I'd give them a proper feast if I could. <laughs> Odds clambered slowly off her knee, landing on the ground with a small thud. He ambled into a pile of dry leaf litter. Gwen began to chant. A feast for all at Christmas time, the finest brew of sludgy slime, cuckoo's spit and fishy froth, bats in blankets, cockroach broth, pondweed scum with badger fleas, Sludge of snail and hornets as these. Mix and boil with dust and grime. Here's your feast for Christmas time. <laughs> Someone close by chortled. The boy was here, right here beside her home. His red puffy jacket a Blodge of bright colour in Gwen's drab world. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> he gasped, shaking with giggles. It wasn't meant for an audience, Gwen muttered, scowling. She tugged her shawl tightly around her shoulders and deliberately stared at the ground, poking at a puddle of mud with the end of her stick. Don't you get lonely, the boy said after a short silence. You still here? Never lonely. I have all I need. I just thought... You might be a bit miserable being out here on your own at Christmas. When she didn't reply, he said a soft goodbye and ran off around the lake shore and away towards the town. Gwen stayed sitting on her bench. As the dark fingers of the night stole pale winter light away, she breathed in the familiar whiff of decay from the lake. A moment later, 
a little breeze brought her the woody scent of the nearby fir tree. It was the only tree close to her shack, and was as thin and scruffily dressed as she was. But it sheltered her from winter gales and gave her shade on hot summer's days. Gwen closed her eyes, and the sharp green smell conjured in her mind a twinkling of Christmas long ago. Firelight and laughter, paper hats and mince pies. Stupid old thing, she muttered aloud, forcing the images to pop like bubbles. With rough fingers, she rubbed warmth into her knees and thighs, pulling herself awkwardly and painfully to her feet. She went inside to warm up a tin of baked beans on her primus stove. As soon as Gwen woke on Christmas morning, her sixth sense learned over many years in the wild, told her that a quiet whiteness had crept over her home. She wrapped herself in her thickest blanket before she ventured outside. The sudden brightness of the winter sun made her screw up her eyes. Something was sparkling. She picked up her stick and stumbled towards the fir tree. Nature's greenery had been festooned with many coloured festive strands woven across the lowest branches and coiling around the fir cones. Reflected sunlight danced in silver and gold from hanging ornaments. All was adorned with a delicate covering of fresh snow. Gwen felt her furrowed old face crease into an unaccustomed smile. Across the lake, she glimpsed a splash of red under the shadowy trees. The bog which waved her stick in grudging thanks.